Chapter 10 In a straw hut in the quaint and beautiful western woods, smoke bellowing slightly from a metal pipe on the roof, there lived a family of two, wife and a husband. They were both hunters and fishermen who lived like most do in the first turns of the age. The wife is stirring a wooden pot full of boar meat and stew, and the husband is out brandishing a spear, sitting on a very large stone. It is soon that his wife will have their first child. It is summer in a, in a mild day, and things are quiet for now. The man walks into his hut and hugs his wife, asking her, What are we to name our child? I'll leave it entirely up to you, dear. The wife smiles and replies, If it is a girl, I will name her. If it is a boy, you can. The man sinks and thanks for him in Escadia, said the man. I had a dream. It is hard to explain. The man looked away and said, Ismarel, if it is a girl, then, said the woman with a smile. The day goes on pleasantly, and they do their chores around the place, skinning animals and cleaning wooden pots, chopping wood and washing off in their little branch, hands mostly. A shy wind can be felt from the cold night air as the night falls on the remote wooded family. As night came, a loud bellow could be heard from the door, and a crude spear tore into the tore it to shreds, sending straw and rope everywhere. An orc raiding party attacks, and the man and woman pick up the closest things to weapons they can find and start going toe to toe with the orcs. The man from behind and to the side gets stout, doubly stabbed by orc spears and falls to the floor. The woman screams and angrily fights even harder, taking out all four orcs in the hut, even denting the head of one of one orc skulls being hard and dense. Heavy breathing, she stops the broken broom. She drops the broken broom and falls down beside her husband. He is gone, but not much blood can be seen. For it is underneath him. A rogue arrow flies into the hut and shoots into a wooden shelf. An elf hunting the orcs has been found has found them, and much fighting can be heard afoot. Orcs yelling one by one, and some sort of magic, wild magical beast can be heard mauling them. The woman stumbles outside to find the elf over their corpses, twirling his spear. His spear not crude but ornate and beautiful. The beast she heard was a fey dragon who is now as calm and gentle as a mouse. Let us leave this place, said the elf to the woman. The woman replied, This is my home, elf. I will clean up everything you see. Thank you for your help. The elf laughs ever so slightly. The elf slowly leaves his fate dragon companion at his side and transverses the makeshift and overgrown path through the woods toward the unknown locale. The woman cries and brings things up against the door to close its empty spaces, laying down on her on her bed. Orcs have been terrorizing the world for many years now, and never like this. Something is happening to the in the orc world to stir them up. Lancaster wakes, caked in sweat from the dream. The birds chirping. There is a floating note above his table from the Tempest Guild, brought by a bat through the night. He will read it much later and feels like taking a bath. First he calls a servant from White Tower and says to her, I need more ethereal ink, servant. Could you please give me some? The servant woman agrees. However, it will be hard to get as the stock rooms are out of it. Lancaster can still hear the construction going on outside and fears it will bother him. He neatly folds his robe and clothing on his table and enters the warm bath water thinking about the dream. He whirls his fingers around to create a whirlpool effect that lasts, and he enters. Later in the day, when it is time, he reads the notes sent by the Tempest Guild. It speaks of a pardon from being branded and tried as an apostate wizard, and that he would have to travel to the Tempest Guild headquarters on the South Sea Island to explain his case. Lancaster is more than happy by this news and gently lays the note down on the table. It is written in, in, in ethereal ink. Nothing can wash away or remove ethereal ink from paper, and the paper cannot be destroyed. 
However, the ink can be washed away if soaked in more ethereal ink, in which case it can be then be destroyed. Lancaster will prepare for his journey sooner than expected by then. He will, however, do it the accepted way. As the dusks as the dusk storms as the dusk turns in Fendragle, there rides Mirasami and Renault, riding toward Fendragle Castle. She had been she has been released after serving her sentence and is now twenty years old and a blossom. It has been seven years since Fendragle has had no leader, but it has prospered. She has been given a magical amulet by the Tempest Guild to wear at all times that would stave off her psychotic nature. The amulet is made of crude silver with curved spikes on its chain, with an oval ruby in its golden center piece, shaped somewhat like an upturned heart. She enters her throne room and sits upon the throne her father once called his. She will seek to reclaim the Fendrakel name and improve its standing with the world once more. Lip braziers above the world and uh, uh, lit braziers above the walls in a line to the throne. She sinks in her throne, smiling. A servant brings her a basket of fruits, and she says gently, Thank you very much. The servant smiles and bows his head. Renault enters and says, I have a surprise for you, Mirasami. You're going to love this. She quickly gets up and with Renault and heads for the stables. Once they get there, she is surprised to see a beautiful beast laying in hay. It is your fey dragon, your highness, exclaims Renault. Leave us, Renault. I want to spend some time with my friend, she says. Renault heads back to the castle. She spends all day brushing its feathers and talking to it, ever so often pulling up dandelions. She remembers the death. She remembers the dungeons, the hanging by chains, being called a monster and no better than an orc. She bursts into tears and the fey dragon slowly looks at her and puts his paw on her knee. She pets it and gets up to walk back toward the castle. Before she does, she turns to it and says, Your name will be Aaron, my faithful friend. The fey dragon shows its teeth and licks its paws. She smiles and drops a handful of dandelions. Fendragel has seen better days. The court wizard, Junther, seek control of Fendragel while Mirasami was in prison and has basically gotten a following. Her and Renault travel to see him in the castle. They open the stone ward, they open the, the stone ward door to travel to, to reveal him talking to a couple of people about Mirasami being just like her father. Mirasami puts her arms on her on her waist and yells, I order you out of my castle at once. Junther gets angry and points his finger, and a strange noise is heard. He tries again and again. The noise happens each time, and he starts to get afraid. I will leave as you request, your highness. Junther sighs and humbly leaves the castle on foot and heads for the stables. Later that night, while she was washing in a bath, she took off her necklace to get in the tub, and she was flung back into the wall, slipping on water and falling. Surprised, she quickly puts the amulet back on. This amulet protects me from magic? Why would the Tempest Guild give me such a thing? I have never even heard of such a thing, she thought to herself. She then vowed to never take it off, and continued on her way, grabbing a cloth towel and drying off putting it around her and going out into her bedchamber. There sat Renault smiling at Mirasami. I knew you when you were a youngling. You have blossomed into a beautiful woman, one I wouldn't mind getting to know. Mirasami blushed and gently lost her grip on her cloth towel, exposing her nudity to Renault. Renault stood and put the robes back around her and kissed her. Later that night, they made passionate love on her exquisite bed planting their faces in the pillows and tangling their legs around one another. They kissed softly, but Renault firmly gripped her smooth, soft breasts. They made love until the morning, where Renault stood outside on the balcony, listening to the birds and watching the fog. Do you love me? could be heard from the bed, where Mirasami was still laying. I always have my lady, said Renault. The two got dressed and ordered the cook to prepare a large meal. Just then a crow, 
a messen the messengers the messenger bird is used by wizards along with bats. Drop the note on the window. Renault picked it up and untied it. It read Murasami, this is not over, not by a long shot. You will pay. Junther. Renault crumbled it up and dropped dropped his hand. He felt the note smoothed it, smoothed itself and instead placed it in his pocket. For it was a small note, obviously written in in ethereal ink. Murasami looked at him from bed and said, What was that noise? Renault gazed gazes out the window and replies, Nothing, do not worry. Lancaster arrives as a traveler at Fendragle, passing the castle of a week later by a horse. He has brought a boat ride to the Tempest Guild and wishes to clear his name. He gets to the dock. He gets to the dock where a small little wooden boat will take him not far out into the South Sea to the little to the island castle. He gets on the boat, waves crashing against his little boat, and sets out. The island is not far off in the distance from Finn Druggle docks. He steps off onto the firm island and walks up the stairs into the castle. He is greeted by Desmond, the leader. Adorned in plain garb, but wielding a staff, Desmond speaks to Lancaster, saying, Welcome, Lancaster. I have heard of your hero deeds. Lancaster replies, I wish to clear my name. Desmond puts his hand around Lancaster's back and assures him that he has been cleared and that the Tempest Guild considers him a hero. We wish to invite you as a member of the Tempest Guild, Lancaster. You may use your favorite spell one last time to bring all your belongings here if you wish. Desmond says smartly. Lancaster agrees and, and populates the empty room made for him with all his belongings. We will send out a crow or bat to White Tower to let them know. Do not trouble yourself, Lancaster. Lancaster thanks him and asks to be alone for a while to take all of this in. The sun sets on the remote island and the waters warm sway back and forth telling a story of an innocent past.